Thomas Dean Gibson, more commonly known as Tommy, was born on the 5th of July 1988 in Glendale, Douglas County, Oregon, to parents Larry and Judith Gibson, who already had a daughter by this time, Karen, who was two and a half years Tommy's senior. On March 18th of 1991, two-year-old Tommy was playing in the front yard of the family's residence in rural Azalea, and at approximately 11.30am that day, Tommy vanished into thin air. Authorities were called and the search for the toddler began, but this case was far more complex than what first would meet the eye. According to Tommy's father, former Douglas County Deputy Sheriff Larry Gibson, on the morning of his son's disappearance, he came outside and found Tommy playing in the yard. He told him to stay there and to wait for his sister Karen to come outside. Larry then claimed that he went out for a jog, taking his .45 automatic handgun with him for reasons unknown. As he went over a fence in his yard, he noticed a stray cat walking nearby. These cats had been causing quite a lot of trouble in and around the area, so Larry decided to shoot it. It's difficult to fathom why someone would feel the need to shoot a stray cat, especially in a city. However, Larry claimed that his shot missed and the cat ran down a nearby hill. Judith Gibson, Tommy's mother, claimed that she heard the shot. After the cat ran away, Larry looked through the area for the used shell casing, but he was unable to locate it. According to him, he then continued on with his jog, which, according to Larry, lasted around 47 minutes. When he returned home, his wife Judith was in a flat panic and informed her husband that she couldn't find their son. Within an hour, several neighbours, volunteers and officers began to search the woods around the Gibson residence, looking for any trace of young Tommy. Investigators felt that Larry was acting rather suspiciously during this initial search. This was due to the fact that instead of immediately going out to search for his son, Larry decided to take a shower and get into his deputy sheriff's uniform. Larry also told people to stop searching because it was snowing. You would think that if your own child was missing, you would search for them irregardless of what the weather conditions were like. Even though his supervisor told him not to report to work that day, Larry left the family home in his patrol car to supposedly check nearby rest stops. Larry was certain that his son had been abducted, though it's difficult to ignore how strange his behaviour was during this time. Several days after Tommy had disappeared, Larry was interviewed by FBI agents, during which he lied to them and claimed that he never left the family home that afternoon, when clearly he had, investigators confirming this after checking the mileage on his patrol car. This forced Larry to admit that he had indeed left the property that afternoon, but why would he hide such a thing? Seven weeks into the investigation, police detectives confronted Larry about their own suspicions. They told him that they believed he had accidentally shot and killed Tommy and covered up his death so that he wouldn't lose his job nor his reputation. Larry dismissed these claims and told the police that this did not happen. However, he strangely said that the scenario was, quote, possible. Something else which didn't add up was the 47-minute time frame during which Larry allegedly went on his jog. 
Authorities, strangely enough, did find a dead cat in the area and theorised that the bullet had passed through the cat and struck Tommy as he played in the yard nearby. Investigators suspected that Larry continued on his jog, unaware that he had accidentally shot his son until he returned home. Another point of interest was that Larry claimed that he jogged for over two miles, which took him 47 minutes in total. However, investigators determined that he only jogged for one mile, which would have taken about half the time, roughly just 20 minutes, leaving more than 20 minutes unaccounted for. Investigators believed that when Larry returned, he found his son's body and he subsequently panicked. Police believe that Larry then spent the next 20 or so minutes cleaning up the scene and hiding the body, possibly placing it in the trunk of his patrol car before driving off, whilst volunteers searched for Tommy. Larry, however, claims that this theory is simply not true. He passed a polygraph test and no forensic evidence was ever found to back up this theory. It's interesting to note that Larry claimed that two eyewitness reports backed up his theory that Tommy was kidnapped. A neighbour claimed that she was driving to the bank when she noticed an older gold or tan coloured truck pass her by. The truck had two occupants and its licence plate was not where it was supposed to be. The woman claimed to have seen the truck pull into a driveway that led to the Gibson residence. However, when this witness was initially interviewed, she did not mention such a vehicle. Tommy's four-and-a-half-year-old sister, Karen, later told her parents that she claimed to have seen a couple take her brother from the front yard. The woman had long blonde hair and the man had dark hair, a beard and scruffy looking clothes. The truck was similar in description to the one allegedly seen by a neighbour, however the couple have never been identified. Police have mostly dismissed this claim as they believe Larry may have coaxed his daughter into making a false story in order to protect him and his family. Soon after Tommy vanished, investigators received a mysterious letter which was signed, quote, Spot in the Road. They believe the author has vital information in regards to Tommy's disappearance, but the author has never come forward nor revealed their identity. Larry resigned from the sheriff's office and moved to his native Montana shortly after his son's disappearance. He and his wife Judith separated in 1994 and she took their children and moved back to Oregon. In April of 1994, Larry Gibson was arrested and charged with Tommy's murder after Tommy's sister Karen shockingly changed her story. She claimed that she saw her father beat Tommy until he fell limp. This was followed by Larry placing Tommy's body in a black trash bag, which Larry later placed in the back of his patrol car. Karen and Judith testified against Larry at his trial, as did Larry's half-sister, who claimed that he admitted to killing Tommy shortly after he vanished. Judith also claimed that her husband was physically abusive towards Tommy and their other daughters, Karen and Lisa, who was born after Tommy's disappearance. Several witnesses took to the stand at Gibson's trial and claimed that Larry had threatened to kill both his wife and his daughter. At the time, Judith was taking college classes and therefore Larry had to care for the children, which he claimed caused him a lot of stress. Police believed that because of this, Larry may have become aggressive and beat his son to death. However, since there are no clues as to Tommy's whereabouts or what happened to him, 
this case remains a mystery. A jury convicted Larry Gibson of second degree manslaughter and as a result was sentenced to only three years in prison. He was released in 1996 and to this day he denies any involvement in his son's disappearance. At the time of his vanishing, Tommy Gibson was two years old and stood at approximately two feet five inches tall, weighing around 35 pounds. He is of Caucasian descent, with brown hair and brown eyes. At the time, Tommy had a gap between his upper front teeth. And that day, the toddler was wearing a purple sweatshirt, grey trousers and black and white checkered shoes. If Tommy Gibson is somehow still out there, alive, he would be 34 years old. Despite the time that has passed, Tommy nor his remains have ever been located. What happened to him on that fateful day in March of 1991 remains unknown. However, his case is classified as a non-family abduction, despite all of the evidence against his father. The truth is out there. Someone, somewhere, must know what happened to Tommy Dean Gibson.